Hello, I'm Mimi, and today I want to share with you a quick tutorial about how you can make simple animated loops of your art. They're really easy to make and I use them all the time to add borders and cute assets to my videos. I'll show you how to create them in both Photoshop and Procreate, but the concept is the same whatever software you like to use. I think animated assets can really level up your video content, especially if you're an artist, because they're the perfect way to bring some of your creative style to your video content. Like with most creative ideas in digital software, there are a whole lot of ways you can go about creating something like an animated video asset. So I'm just gonna show you a really simple way of doing things that's perfect for beginners and doesn't need too much technical know-how. But of course, if you have a way of doing any of these steps that you prefer, then go ahead and use that technique and maybe even let us know about it in the comments. So let's make a border together for a YouTube video, which is something I often do for my video frames. So in Photoshop, first we'll need to make a new file and you'll want it to be the right size for how you're using it. Because I'm making my border for a video that I want to enable in 4K, I'll make it 3840 by 2160 pixels. And since it's digital use only, I'll make it 72 PPI and in RGB color mode. Some other common sizes are 1920 by 1080 pixels, which is high definition video, and 1080 by 1920, which is the same ratio, but flipped on its side, which is used for Instagram stories. So I have a new document and I'll make a new layer to draw my art on. It's important to consider what kind of background this border will be going over. Is it footage or maybe a colored frame? I'm going to take the animation we make in Photoshop into video editing software later, but I like to either add in a frame for the background here, or at least a color similar to it just for reference so I can create a border that stands out. For this video, I'm going to be putting my border over my title frame, so I've already drawn that up and I'll drop it in as my background so I know how big to make my border illustration. I think this border would look cute as some rainbows, so I'll start with my first rainbow color and go around the edges where I want my rainbows to be and draw in those arches. I'll do the same thing with my next two rainbow colors all on the same layer until I'm happy with how they look. So at this stage I have all of the elements for this border in position, this is how it'll look on my background. Now to make it animate a little, I'm going to draw it a couple more times and then we'll loop through the three frames to get the sketched animated effect. So I'll name this first layer something like Rainbows Frame 1 and reduce the opacity of the layer because I want to use it as a reference. Make a new layer above and draw the same thing as we did on the first layer using that as a reference but just make it slightly different. This will probably happen naturally as you redraw the lines. You don't really want it to be too different each time or it'll look jumpy but make the layers too similar and you won't really notice the animation. So now I have two layers of the same rainbow border but redrawn, and I'm going to repeat that process again on a third layer. I'll name the second layer we drew, hide it, and make sure my first layer is at reduced opacity for me to reference. The reason I'm referencing the first layer here and not the second one is because I want all of the layers to be similar to the first one. If I reference the second one, I might get too different to the first layer when I draw the third, and there'll be a big jump when we loop them. So I've now drawn three sets of my rainbow border. Make sure they're all named clearly and all back to full opacity. Although I'll animate this later on in video editing software, I like to preview what these frames will look like when they're animated so I can easily make changes here in Photoshop. So let's open the timeline tab from the window menu and you should see it pop up down the bottom and this is where you can make frame by frame animations. Click on new frame animation and you can see it's given us our first frame here on the left. With this frame selected, we can show and hide any layers we want to be visible in this frame, and also how long the frame goes for. I find 0.2 seconds per frame to be quite a nice speed, which is the same as 5 frames per second, but feel free to play around with the duration of your frames to change the aesthetic of your animation. So for the first frame, I'm going to show our Rainbows Frame 1 layer and hide the others. I'll keep the background visible just for now though as a reference. Now I'll click on this little plus icon and it's made us a new frame identical to the first. With this frame selected, I'll hide the Rainbows Frame 1 layer and show the Rainbows Frame 2 layer. We now have two frames, so I'll make a third by clicking on the plus icon again and with this third frame selected, I'll hide the Rainbows Frame 2 layer and show the Rainbows Frame 3 layer. Now we have the three frames of our loop. If we click on the play button, it'll show us what our animated loop looks like. 
And just like that, we've made a super simple frame by frame animation. Like I said, the animation I've done in Photoshop is really just so I can see if my frames all work together and I can really easily edit them here. But what we actually do is redo this animation in video editing software so we can have full control of the animated frames. Now you could totally export this sequence as a GIF or a video file if you like, but we export as individual PNGs because in our experience we get to maintain the highest quality this way while maintaining control of the animation in the video edit. So I'll simply go File, Export, Layers to Files, keep the Visible Layers Only box unchecked, select PNG24 as my file type, and make sure transparency is enabled. Now this has given us all of our layers as PNGs with a transparent background that we can then take into our video editing software to make a looping asset to use over our video footage. Now you can do the exact same thing in Procreate, so I'll quickly take you through the steps there as well. Just like before, I've got my artboard set to 4K settings as you can see, just because that's how we want to upload our video. And on a new layer, I'm going to draw my rainbow border fully on one layer. To help us with the extra frames, we can then go to the spanner in the top left, click on canvas and enable animation assist. This is the equivalent to Photoshop's timeline feature. And in the settings here, I'll make my animation loop mode at around five frames per second. Onion skin is an animation technique where you can see the previous frames in a lower opacity. So you can just use them as a reference to draw the next frame. So for this, I personally just want one onion skin frame and we'll make the opacity for it around 40%. I also want this background layer to stay as my background the whole time, so I'll tap that frame and select background. Now I'll click add frame and it's made me a new layer because in Procreate each layer is a frame and I'm going to draw the exact same rainbow as I did before using the first one as a guide. I want there to be a teeny bit of variation from the first one, but not too much. With the second rainbow border drawn, I'll click add frame again and redraw my border once more. So in total, we have three frames. And if we click play, it'll show us what our loop looks like. So once you're happy with how your frames look in a loop, just like before, you could export as a GIF or video file, but we like to export as individual PNG files to have full control of the quality and animation in the video edit. So up here in the share tab, I'll click on PNG files and choose where to export them and it will save us each layer as a high quality, transparent PNG. So now that we have a set of three PNG images that create a loop when animated together, let's hop on over to our video editing software and put it all together with some footage. So we're using Premiere Pro, so let's go ahead and open that up and create a new sequence in 4K at 25 FPS, just because that's what we use. Double click in the project window to open up your files and navigate to your PNG folder. Select the first image, make sure image sequence is selected and then click import. Now we can drag the image loop into our sequence and Premiere will default make this image sequence three frames long because it is an image sequence made of three frames. But we need to change the frame rate to make it look how we want. Right click on the PNG sequence, click modify, interpret footage and change the frame rate to 5 FPS or your preferred frame rate for your style. Now our loop is at the right speed. Now Premiere won't automatically loop our image sequence so it'll just play it through once, which means we'll have to loop it manually. To do this, click on the clip in the timeline and Ctrl C to copy and Ctrl V to paste down the timeline. And now we have two loops. Repeat this process until the duration of the loop is as long as you need it to be. We want a one minute background, so we'll duplicate it to be one minute long. The final step is to select all the clips, right click, nest, call it looping border and hit OK. A nest is like a group or a folder. So now the editing software sees the looping border as one clip, which makes it really easy to move around or shorten where needed. Keep in mind that video editing software sees tracks from the top down. So as long as you have transparency on your border background and pop any footage you're editing on the layers below it, it'll always be visible on top to jazz up your video. Now this is a really beginner friendly way of doing things, but can be a little bit manual and time consuming to copy and paste the image sequence again and again to loop it. 
So what we actually do for our videos is to bring it into Adobe After Effects and use an expression to get the computer to loop it for us, but the end result is the same as doing it manually in Premiere. So if you use After Effects yourself, we'll quickly show you how we do it. We import our PNG sequence into Adobe After Effects the same way we did with Premiere Pro by double clicking in the project window, selecting the first image and making sure PNG sequence is enabled. After Effects will default make this image sequence 3 frames long because it's a sequence made of 3 frames, but we need to change the frame rate to make the animation look how we want it to. Right click on the PNG sequence, click interpret footage, main and change the frame rate to 5 fps or your preferred frame rate. And now our loop is at the right speed. So let's create a new 4K composition using the same settings as we did in Premiere and we'll call it loop. Now let's drag the image sequence into the loop timeline. It's not looping yet so let's enable time remapping by right clicking on the track and then enable time remapping. The clip can now be extended down the timeline, but it's still not looping. So let's alt click on the stopwatch next to time remapping and type the expression loop out, open bracket, close bracket. And that's it, just like magic. It now loops forever. Let's import our title frame and put it below our loop layer. And we're done. So that's how we make animated loops of my art to take our videos to the next level and share some of my creative style across our video content. I hope you found it helpful for your own videos. If you did, then give this video a like, leave me a comment and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.